नमस्ते नतलोकबंधो कारुण्य सिंधो पति मुद्धरात्मीयटाक्षदृष्टिया ऋज्व्याति सुधाभिवृष्टिया स्वामी नमस्ते स्वामी नमस्ते स्वामी नमस्ते स्वामी नमस्ते विशुद्ध सत्वस्य गुणा प्रसाद स्वात्माभूति परमाशाति तृप्ति प्रहर्ष परमात्मनिष्ठा यदानस संवृछती विशुद्ध सत्व गुणा प्रसाद स्वात्माभूति परमाशाति तृप्ति प्रहर्ष परमात्मनिष्ठा यया सदानंदरसम संवृछति यया सदानंदरसम संवृछति जय गुरु जय गुरु जय गुरु सी दिस श्लोका इट इज सेइंग द लास्ट लाइन यया सदानंदरसम संवृछति that is by which all the uh, effect of being a vishuddha sattva being pure when the mind is very pure and it reaches that vishuddha sattva state very very pure state then whatever effect it has in our mind through that we get sada ananda rasam sada means what always ceaselessly Ananda rasam, you know, we it is a nectarine joy, and it, it doesn't depend on anything. It constantly flows out. We get filled, flooded by that. So we can understand why we need to have purity. We need to have purity because the mind will become calm when the self can be revealed. And what is the effect of that? Effect is effect of that is that we are always floating in ananda. it's not that you will not have any unpleasant unfavorable situation in life the life will come to you as it comes but you will not lose your balance you will not lose your poise you will be always feeling that you are floating in ananda and still be able to deal with any kind of adversity or difficult situation that is what we want so as namrata was saying uh, in connection with that you know once i asked swami ji uh, i was also from the household once upon a time and at that time we used to meet swami ji in uh, jamshedpur so once when there was satsang and those days there used to be very beautiful satsangs where there will be lot of question answer so i asked swami ji one day that swami ji uh, i want to become like you so he first So laughed and laughed and laughed, and then said that okay, what are the quali- what are what is it that you in me you see which you want to become? I said that your love for everybody and your ananda ananda maitva that always you are so happy and cheerful and which spreads you know when we come near him it just fills us. So Swami ji said a very important thing. He said that. you love these qualities and the qualities will be yours and after that many times he tells and he does even now he says that love a quality and the quality will be yours so like in the material people the worldly people we want more and more of possessions wealth comfort we love that and we work for it right we only work for it similarly when we feel that our 
inside should be pure, purified. We want very pure qualities. Then our whole love, if it is there, you will find that whatever you are doing, whether you are thinking, whether you are talking, whether you are doing some work, whether you are interacting, from every episode, every event, every thought, you will be able to understand where you have become impure. And naturally, when if our love is for purity, next time we will remove that. And we will try to strengthen the pure actions, pure thoughts, pure speech. And all these things, as I am telling you, it's not that it just, everything is very much connected. You listen and try to become like that. Whatever you are hearing, say from this moment onwards, you should feel that, oh, I should introspect, I should be alert, alert to see how my mind is behaving, alert to see even how I am talking, the tone of my talk. I may not be showing anger to somebody, but that by the tone, by the eyes, the expression, the gestures, it will be known by the other person that this person is not very happy and talking to me angrily. So that much subtle our alertness should become. And this is how I am just taking one example. All the qualities that we talk about, we read and we love, we should be able to bring about in this manner. Then once I asked Swamiji, how to become pure? The same reply he said, love purity and the purity will be yours. Love the verse purity. So today morning I was going through this Prabhat Rashmi. I told you yesterday that I thought that I will not talk this time. I will be only meeting people. But then I thought that the best thing will be this Prabhat Rashmi. I found these Prabhat Rashmi books absolutely just gems. Because this Swamiji talks like he, now also he is talking. And when this Prabhat Rashmi and Pushpa Samarpanam started in our ashram, that was in 1995. We wanted that such a program should be there where all of us can come together and we can offer our pranams to Swamiji. Then slowly it became offering of flowers. So around that program, there used to be a lot of divinity, you know, plucking flowers, cleaning them, uh, setting up the asan for him and everything. And it used to be at 7 o'clock in the morning, soon after our prayers would be over. So it was be early in the morning, it used to be very nice. And those days Swamiji used to talk mostly on sadhana, mostly on sadhana. So everything is for, what is sadhana? Sadhana is to purify oneself. <laughs> sadhana is ultimate aim, is aim of self-realization, God-realization. But how? The, the process is to purify oneself. At every point you know about the self, you, you gather more and more of knowledge, you understand what the self represents and what is practically what you should do so that this knowledge remains with you, so that you become this knowledge. You are the knowledge. It's not, it's, you never fall from that knowledge. So, so this Prabhat Rashmi's Whenever he spoke, when he started initially in 1995, uh, I think it was in December that we started, and Swamiji started speaking these uh, Prabhat Rashmi's, we thought that, oh, you know, those were not the days of this modern era. No, it's how to reach out to our devotees. So we thought that we will record them, transcribe them, and we will publish in our monthly Vichar Situ. But month, he is speaking 30 days, every day. But Vichara Sethu is only once a month. So maximum we can publish one or two. Out of the 30 we can publish one or two. So we had to select. So if you go through this book, I feel that everybody should read this book. And this book, books, there are three volumes, there are so many which have not been published. I mean actually it's a, now I think maybe many are there in the website also, which are not published as a book, but they are in the website. They are gems and any person reading it over and over again, I think will have purity. Nothing but purity. Purity, sublimity, divinity, you know these words. If you just keep quiet and think about these words, purity, sublimity, divinity, that is what we want. These are such feelings which really engulf us and we feel that we are surrounded by these 
this purity. So this morning I was just going through, I was thinking so many are there. So since I have got a topic, that is why I don't like topics. You have to constantly come back to topic because the audience will come expecting something very focused. So uh, I thought that, okay, let me see. And early in the morning reading this, every time I read it, even today, such a beautiful feeling it gives. And I was feeling that this feeling should be transferred to all of you. When you read this, when you hear about this, it's nothing that the greatest concepts, Swamiji yesterday was thundering the concepts and trying to make everybody feel it. But afterwards, how to retain it? The retaining will be done only when we are constantly trying our best to remain in a divine ambience, divine thought, divine everything. In, in all our thoughts, I would say all our thoughts, not only all our actions. See, after some time there will be Pushpa Samarpanam. It becomes a very divine atmosphere. We are chanting the Guru Stotras, we are offering flowers, and there is, a div there is a oneness of divinity in that. But after that, how to retain it? We have to retain it when we are moving around, when we are talking to people, when we are eating food, when we are just, you know, so many of you will be going away to your homes. How do you retain it and carry it with you? So this is one thing that this, these words, purity, sublimity, divinity, all these things, you know, you should think of these words alone and try to feel that you are being drenched like a shower, we get drenched, we get inundated by water, like that we should be. So, one thing is that we should love purity. And what is purity? Atma Shuddhi, self-purification. And yesterday I explained to you, most of our traits, many are very good, which makes our mind very, very calm. And there are traits which make our mind constantly disturbed, agitated, afflicted. So those unwanted, undesirable ones, we should constantly try to remove. And the desirable ones, we should try to more and more cultivate them, strengthen them, and try to become them. Try to become. So in that, we saw that the mind itself plays havoc. The mind itself becomes the enemy. Mind is not given to thinking of this. However much we feel that we should do it, I will do this. I, I take a resolve that, yes, I will do the sadhana like this. But the mind goes away to all the worldly things. And throughout the day, we are spending more time in worldly things and less in our, this sadhana of looking into oneself, seeing how the mind is behaving and not trying much to make it pure. So, I will read from, uh, achha, first I will read this sloka, then we will go there. So, this sloka is Vishuddha Sattvasya Guna Prasadaha. Would you like to recite it? This is the sloka from Viveka Chudamani, 119th sloka. So, Sanjay, will you repeat? Vishuddha Sattvasya Guna Prasadaha Swatmanu Bhuti Parama Prashanti Tripti Prahashaha Paramatmanishtha Yaya Sadanandarasam Samrachati Vishuddha Sattvasya Guna Prasadaha Swatmanu Bhutihi 
परमाप्रशांति तृप्ति प्रहर्ष परमात्मनिष्ठा यदानंदरस डिफिकल्ट when i were like you any such shloka which would come my way swami has taught many shlokas even before i joined the ashram seeing my interest in shlokas those days were not days of email or anything whatsapp he used to write the shlokas in his own handwriting and typed type the meanings and send me i was in kharagpur at that time and i will be chanting and learning them i if i look back many of the many of them i did not understand so deeply as i do now but the very fact that these are something which are from the scriptures and they are giving us some knowledge a direction to go forward i was very happy and my commitment was to learn them not learn not learn just to learn them do you get me not just feeling that i have learned one more shloka i know three shlokas now i know four shlokas now i know five shlokas no not like that every shloka i have chanted several times each word and trying to understand it trying to feel that word what that word is and how to get it why i'm not get it what is this vishuddha vishuddha sattva many times in the day i feel that my mind goes to various criss cross thoughts not thoughts which i don't like myself so what is this and then gunah prasadah what is this placidity what is this prasadah why don't i get it if i get it for a little while why do i lose it why is the what is the reason so you understand so it's not that i was simply sitting i was very active at that time i was teaching also so in between in between whenever we get get time we must give our mind to this that is your love is now for what purity why are we not able to do because our love is somewhere else our love is as soon as you get time you start thinking of your grandchildren हाँ स्कूल से आ गई है क्या आज उसने क्या किया आज खाना क्या दिया है दिस इज योर चिल्ड्रेन दिस इज योर दोज डू नॉट हैव ग्रैंड चिल्ड्रेन यू हैव अदर थिंग्स सो वेयर इज द लव लव हैज टू कम हियर सो इफ यू से आई एम वेरी हैप्पी दैट मेनी ऑफ यू सेट एंड नॉट इट योर हेड दैट यू वॉन्ट टू बिकम प्योर माई डियर चिल्ड्रेन यू वॉन्ट यू शुड बिकम प्योर वी शुड ऑल बिकम प्योर दिस प्योरिटी वर्ल्ड it just you know it cleanses us from inside and outside it cleanses the whole atmosphere it cleanses the whole mind and to be able to give a little resolve resolve to it that i'll try i'll definitely try i'll become committed i will do this this is what we need and it may take time how much you are able to give time or how much you are able to stick to it it will depend on uh, that will depend on your progress but try we must so i was thinking that you know all of you are here i don't know how many of you are there if you are really committed you not after this class whoever doesn't have this shloka should look for this shloka should write it out and i tell you this is uh, actually it is available in our website it is the, i think the 90th 
shloka. Anyway, you see in the website, which is a numbering, I don't know. It is the Vishuddha Sattvasya Viveki Chudamani 119th shloka. And Swamiji used to tell me, Swamiji always told, he is a, what to say, a, a storehouse, or you may can say, big uh, storehouse of knowledge and shlokas. He, Swamiji always says that I have not read. But the number of shlokas that he knows, he tells, even those which he has learned so much way back in his childhood, are many, many, many. So he used to, he always says, this rejuvenation on shlokas, on self, on <coughs> qualities, on purification, this is the most effective sadhana in one's life. How can we make ourselves pure? I have learned this sloka. Now at every step I have to see whether I am going according to it or I am falling from it. Right? So he used to say that why don't you keep it written somewhere on your wall? Even now he says. So actually in the ashram I used to do this. I will write in a paper, stick it in the kitchen or somewhere else where I can see it, learn it. And once you learn it, you can then chant in your own. And it should not be just a chanting, it should be always introspecting and chanting, comparing and chanting, analyzing and chanting. So, what is the meaning of Vishuddha Sattvasya? Vishuddha Sattvasya means the one who, of, of the one who is Vishuddha Sattva, the one who has Purity, absolute purity. Gunaha, qualities, characteristics. So we should, of that one who is absolutely pure, what are his characteristics? We ourselves understand when our mind is very pure, it's not thinking uh, anything, you know, any, any kind of uh, depressing thought or even elated thoughts or about somebody. It's, it's very sh quiet, calm. Then we feel very happy about it. So, being a Vishuddha Sattva, the characteristics become this. What will be the characteristics? Prasadaha, placidity of mind. Then, Swatma Anubhutihi, Sva Atma Anubhutihi. Swa ka kya hai? One's own of the self. So, experience of the self, one's own self, you will be constantly remaining seated in yourself. Now, always you will be experiencing that I am the self. Now it is a knowledge. We have been, all of you are, have been exposed to this knowledge for a long time. So, I know that I am not the body, I am the self. Like a parent, we can constantly chant this, constantly say this, I am not the body, I am the self. But what does it mean? Am I, is my life being guided by that knowledge? No. Because the self, the characteristics of the self is unchanging, undecaying, unmoving, unaffected. So, but I find that every now and then I am getting affected. So, even though I am telling I am the self, am I behaving like this? When we are working with few people, how much we are getting irritated. We are so impatient with others' views. We constantly feel that I know the best. His views are not all right. I know the best. So my view should be taken. How much we are disturbed by our own, you know, traits. So is my life getting guided by the self? I know this, this is a knowledge. But when my life is not according to it. So, I should be untainted. Like yesterday I said, Akashava Lepa Vidura Goham. That I am the self, which is like the space, which is always taintless. But I find that, no, I am not. You leave aside big, big things. We become affected when somebody talks to us harshly. We always expect that people should talk to me sweetly, lovingly, caringly, understandingly. And we do not get it, so we get very agitated. Especially from the people from whom we expect. So expectation is one hindrance. Understand? So expectation is one hindrance. Market 
keep it in your mind that expectation any kind of expectation and desire is a hindrance in the mind of becoming for the mind to become pure to for the mind to become peaceful and for the mind to constantly remaining in the self expectation is a hindrance so swa atma anubhuti so always prasada is one placidity of the mind is one swatma anubhuti is another characteristic so every time when the these uh, we are chanting we should see whether we are getting guided by is whether our actions our thoughts our feelings our views our you know feelings about others has it been guided by this am i doing like this or i am falling we may fall it's not you know mind is such that is not that by reading it once or twice we will go up to the aim but we will fall down we will again progress then slowly we will find the progress is more and falling down and slipping is less this is how one goes ahead then parama prashanti just imagine just imagine just keep quiet and parama prashanti just feel it feel it feel it that parama prashanti is supreme peace supreme peace the mind is peaceful sometimes but not it just breaks the peacefulness breaks and this is talking of parama prashanti supreme peacefulness what is that oh, it is possible if possible i would like to have it tripti tripti is contentment oh i will be contented by whatever comes in my life contented so this constantly wanting more and more and more will be stopped contented yadrichha lava santushtah whatever life brings we accept whatever goes from life we let it go contentment is there and praharsha real joy delight you will be always cheerful always delighted so not only that your being will be delighted wherever you go with whomever you meet you will find that delight that cheerfulness it getting spread to everybody even to the animals if you go to the animals you will find that the animals also will be very very fond of you so then paramatma nishtha this nishtha the wholesome abidance in the supreme self this is where we lack we want to become devotee of the self see ramrata was saying everybody feels ma talks on bhakti yes i do talk on bhakti do talk on bhakti you know the bhakti is what bhakti is not only for the idol or image or god bhakti is towards this path bhakti is your absolute one pointedness one pointed love and yearning for something which we want to achieve generally it is for god and when we are talking about this self and brahman and this path it is for the path you must have bhakti for this path love for this path to the exclusion of everything else mark mark my words to the exclusion of everything else where is my bhakti now to the world to my family to my children for my wealth and property how to increase it and how to preserve it most of the time goes in that for the comforts and luxury although we are comfort and we are in okay still we'll feel that some little more comfort so our bhakti is towards that if our bhakti is towards that you will not have bhakti towards self bhakti ki this is not rewarding you see we want to earn money and have more and more comforts and luxury and what not the feeling that i have feeling that i have lot of things feeling of possessiveness so that when we work for all that we make effort and we get there is a feeling of satisfaction in the mind but when you are devoted to the self you want to become devoted it doesn't reward you immediately you don't get immediately you don't don't get a sweet like thing that this is see this is self realization eat it and you will feel that you have self realized the self aisa to nahi hai na very abstract so how will you know 
So this is why the bhakti goes constantly goes towards the world, where you will get short, short pleasures from short living things, and the mind doesn't go here, which will you do not cannot even judge whether you are going forward or not. There comes that paramatma nishtha, that nishtha should be there. When one is a householder, the whole nishtha is to the house, and that is what is his dharma. That is the dharma. If you have children, your nishtha should be towards the children. We have old parents, your nishtha should be to the old parents. But know that there is another nishtha which will, if you keep in mind that this is the supreme nishtha and you go according to that knowledge, then you will find even your household nishthas will be very enjoyable and very correct, very righteous, very righteous. So, the supreme nishtha for the uh, self, supreme self, paramatma nishtha, wholesome abidance, to the exclusion of everything else. To the exclusion means your mind has to be in your duties and responsibilities, no doubt. But knowing that there is something else higher than this. So I must give my thought, my whole heart to it. Still, I should be doing the work. Finding, you know, then comes the next phase. Finding all that you do as the self, as God. We try to have a difference. This is my household duties and this is my spiritual duties. No. You have to find that same spirituality, same divinity, same self, same God in everything. With what knowledge? Because God is one, all-pervading, the Self is one, the Brahman is one. It is He who is everywhere. Only thing, He has taken some forms, different. He becomes plural. He comes and in front of us, He shows this plural word. But beneath it is that same self. Yes, this mala hai na. Isme har ek phool hai. To koi phool sa bhi. There will be difference in the flowers. But what is binding them? That thread. The thread is there. Similarly, different forms are there. Different activities are there. But the substratum is that same presence, the same consciousness. So we cannot be forgetting the consciousness and dealing with the different differential forms ko samajh mein aaya then um yaya yaya ka matlab hai by which sada always ananda rasam that is the taste of nectarine bliss samrichati is attained so when we start purifying ourselves you know, drop by drop, drop by drop, drop by drop, we start getting this bliss. We start having the taste of this ananda. See, there is uh, another shloka in Viveka Chudamani. Uh, it, uh, it says, when such a state is had, na khidyate no vishayaif pramodate, na sajjate na pi virajyate cha, swasmin sada kridati nandati svayam, the slokas are telling us the same thing. That is, when you become pure and the self is revealed and the characteristics, your traits will be like this, all these that we decide, discussed just now. And what will happen? Then whatever comes in the world, comes in your life, waves, small and big, Neither you will be elated, nor you will be depressed. Zada tar kya hota hai? Jo kuch bhi aata hai, something very good happening will be very elated. And when something doesn't happen according to our wish, we get very sad and depressed, immersed in dukkha. But the what will happen is that we'll be able to deal with everything, floating in everything. Swasmin sada kridati nandati swayam. Why it will be so? 
because when you reach this state you will be always you will be working you will be active but you will be dealing with everything remaining in yourself swasmin and when sada always it's not that dealing with it sometimes they say abhi class ho raha hai thoda bahut self ka touch mil raha hai swami ji ne kal padhaya tha bahut ekdum thunderously sabko aisa aisa kar rahe the wo wo kaano mein lag raha tha so i was feeling that oh swami ji so much power he has even though his body is weak so at that time we feel about the self we just reach that as if we have reached that whatever is to be reached and then we again fall down but when you try this this atma shuddhi is the basic thing and slowly 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 you get to that pure state then what happens swasmin sada you will be always there always what all your activities will be from that state kridati nandati swayam and one will be rejoicing one will be sporting in the self where where is the self inside you swasmin and what is the effect of that nirantar ananda rase na tripta again see this ananda rasa is coming the word isme bhi hai usme bhi hai nirantara means again that sada what is written here sadananda rasam sramichyati and in that shloka nirantara ananda rase na tripta nirantara also ceaselessly ceaselessly ananda rasa you will be immersed in ananda rasa actually there is a fountain of joy inside us sachidananda it is there but we const- constantly look outside to get our joy we don't look inside to find the found find that fountain of joy so when we start purifying ourselves the self starts getting revealed slowly jaise mano ki there is a mirror dirty hai so we take a cloth and we start cleaning the place where we have cleaned maybe if you are standing na ki sirf dekh raha hai hai na hota hai na you have cleaned a little bit you see your eyes you clean a little bit you can start seeing the nose then thodi der ke baad thoda aur saaf kar diya to lips bhi dikh gaye so like that slowly as you keep on cleaning dheere 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 all your features will be clearer and clearer and clearer so here when you slowly start purifying yourself you will be getting drop by drop drop by drop drop by drop the bliss and slowly at you will not even know when you are in that state permanently nirantara when it will become nirantara ceaselessly you will be in that state and that ananda rasa will never diminish never be over because it is a fountain which is self effulgent it is coming from your own within it does not depend on any object all our happiness all our satisfaction all our joys depend on other objects what is it can be an object it can be a person it can be a place it can be some situations all soch ke dekhiye you think or everything is dependent on something or other but this is once own apna hai swayam it comes out and what will it give you tripta it will give you tripti contentment all our sufferings are because of our lack of contentment we constantly expect and desire from people places situations that as agar situation ho jata bahut acha hota if i would meet such and such person it will be very good if i would get this job it will be very good we are only thinking that we will get the tripti from things around us but all those things are what perishables they themselves are perishables how can it give us imperishable joy cannot give so we are looking for the imperishable the self which is always there which is always inside us and in fountain in a like a fountain it is spreading joy but why is it that we are not feeling it because of the dirt that we have accumulated we have accumulated dirt so
I'll read this, read from here a little bit. Uh, at any time, the mind is an admixture of three qualities, three gunas. Sattva, the pure enlightening aspect. Rajas, the activity oriented aspect. And Tamas, the inertial and ignorant ignorance aspect. These three gunas belong to nature. Sometimes sattva will prevail like now. Most of, most of the minds are in sattvic, sattva state because we are hearing this. But as soon as you get up, you start talking to each other and what will you talk? I am very sure you are not going to talk about what we have, you have studied. I will talk about something else. So you have become rajasic. Your sattva quality has gone down, raj, rajas has gone up. And out of that, some may be feeling very tired and feel like, oh, when will I go to the room and take a little nap? So your tamasic quality also has come up. Sattva has gone away somewhere. And rajasic a little bit because you feel hungry. So you want to go to the Annakshatra and eat also. So this is how we are, we are. So how to keep the sattva active? That is also a practice. But it is true that always we cannot be in the Vishuddha sattva state. Always there will be rajasic and tamasic qualities. What we have to do right in the beginning, I said, one has to be very attentive, introspective. See that we do not become slave of the rajas and tamas. And with one's own effort, we should always try to become sattvic. So sometimes sattva prevails, dominating over rajas and tamas. Sometimes rajas rules over sattva and tamas. And again sometimes rajas overwhelms Sattva and Tamas. What is the state of Vishuddha Sattva? Shankaracharya describes the Vishuddha Sattva state as that. Shankaracharya, I think those who do not know this, Viveka Chudamani is Shankaracharya's composition. And it is said that it is his last composition. It has 580 shlokas. And all of our scriptures and prakaranas, it is in the form of uh, a shishya or an enquirer or a seeker asking a question and the guru replying. So here the shishya goes to the guru and goes and does pranam and tells that, please lift me up from this ignorance. I feel that life is surrounding me in such a manner. Sometimes I feel very confused, very fearful. I sometimes feel that I will be drowned. Sometimes I find that there is only uh, darkness in front of me. Sometimes I feel as if a big storm is going to uproot me and throw me away. So I don't know where to go. I have come to you feeling that you alone can give me a reply. So this is how he comes. Very humbly he does pranam and asks him that how will I go beyond this worldly ocean. Where? What is this worldly ocean? It is always told in the scriptures as worldly ocean. Why? Because we get immersed in our dukkhas. We have happiness, no doubt, but the happiness is mixed always with worry and fear and anxiety. And we get immersed, immersed in affliction, immersed in misery, immersed in <coughs> competition, immersed in many other traits which constantly give us suffering. So, that is what is the samsara sagara, bhavarnava. So many words have been used in our scriptures. So he says that kathin katham tariyam bhava sindhu metam kava gatil me kathamos yupayaha. He says that is there any way that I can go across all this suffering? Remaining in the suffering, can I remain afloat? So please tell me, I know that you know and please tell me. So you know the very, it's a very beautiful sloka. So when he comes to the Guru and does pranam and asks these questions with tearful eyes looking at the Guru and the Guru hears him, looks at him and just by the glance the Guru removes the fear. It is just by his glance, that is what the Guru is. I will take out the shloka. Tatha vadantam sharanagatam swam 
संसारदाबानलतापतप्त निरीक्ष्य कारुण्यरसाद्रदृष्ट्या दद्यादभीति सहसा महात्मा तथा वदंत शरणागत स्व संसार दावानलतापतप्त निरीक्ष्य कारुण्यरसाद्रदृष्ट्या दद्यादभीति सहसा महात्मा सो एज ही स्पीक्स टू द गुरु he is saying that how please tell me the way how i can go beyond this misery of this world i am having happiness also no doubt but i get so much of fear and misery and anxiety in my life and i do not know what to do so please tell me so as this man a seeker speaks to the guru and He says that samsara davanala tapa taptam. I feel that as if I am scorched by a forest fire. As if a charu taram ag lag jata hai. Kaisa lagega humko? He is getting scorched. He feels then anybody who is in the midst of such fire, what will he want to do? He just want to get out of it and drown himself in cool water. So he is feeling like that. So he is expressing that to the guru. And nirikshya, the guru looks at him. Nirikshya karunya rasadha drishtya. The guru just looks at him, and the guru's glance is full of karunya rasa. What is karunya rasa? Ah, karuna. His his eyes, his glance is filled with karuna for this man, and not only karuna, his glance is moist by that karuna. You know. it is not just its karuna his eyes have become moist by the karuna looking at the affliction that man is not having any kind of not telling anything about poverty i don't have uh, any wealth or anything i suffer bodily nothing like that he is talking about his mental problems what is the problem that i am not happy i am not contented in this life i don't find peace at all i am always feeling that as if so many things are happening and that i know is because of my ignorance i want to know whether i can cross this misery cross this affliction the anxieties and fears that i come across every day will i be able to cross it and become peaceful he is asking that so he is looking at him his eyes full with karuna drishti moist with that karuna and just by that glance दद्याद अभीति सहसा महात्मा इस महात्मा ही गिव्स हिम अभीति फियरलेसनेस आई थिंक ऑल हु कम टू सच महापुरुषा लाइक मेनी पीपल हु कम टू स्वामी जी दे कम दे विल कम विथ लॉट ऑफ एफ्लिक्शन इन द माइंड लैक ऑफ पीस इन द माइंड सॉरो इन द माइंड बट आफ्टर सम टाइम देर दे विल बी स्माइलिंग वाई because he is able to give dadyad he gives abhiti fearlessness sahasa immediately immediately he is able to give that fearlessness and i think in everybody's life we want that fearlessness we are living with fear fear of what i will i want what i think my life will be fulfilled with and the fear is that suppose i don't get it and whatever i have will i lose it this is a fear so he gives the abhiti and then he also says that ma bhishta vidvam stava nasty apaya samsara sindho starane stupaya yenaiva yata yatayosya param tameva margam tava nirdishami he says ma bhishta don't fear my dear son he, he accepts him you know in the upanishads it is written when such a person comes and falls at the feet of a mahatma a self realized person and tells his sorrows and wants to know then definitely the knowledge should be given to him so he says here also the shishya has come the seeker has come and he has fallen at his feet and expressed himself 
So initially, by look, he has given fearlessness. Then he says, my dear son, Mahabhishta, don't fear. Don't fear. I think we always want to hear that, no? A child wants to hear, a middle-aged person wants to hear, an elderly person wants to hear. A person who is very sick and maybe in the sick bed and death bed even. If somebody says, don't fear, don't fear, theek ho jayega, theek ho jayega. We want to hear that. Mahabhishta, he says. And he is talking about what? Supreme fearlessness. Mahabhishta vidvam stavanas japayaha. He says that, my dear son, don't be fearful. You will not be destroyed. You are feeling that you are going to be uprooted. You are in the darkness. You are going drowned in the ocean. Nothing will happen to you. Samsara sindho starane stupayaha. There is way to go across this samsara sindhu. There is way to go across this worldly ocean. Yenaiva yata yatayosya param. And many have already gone in that path. Just like you, many have also felt the similar thing in their life. That they are confused, lack of clarity, lack of, uh, there is indecision in life. We do not understand what, am I taking the right path or not. So everybody is full with these kind of thoughts. So many such people, they have tread this path and they have been able to take a, go to a state where they are able to remain poised. So, the, he says that many have gone across and has been able to, they have been able to go across this worldly ocean. And that marga, that path, tameva margam tava nirdishami. And since you have come to me and you are asking, the path which many others have taken and have gone across this worldly ocean and have reached that state where there is fearlessness, non, uh, unaffectedness, I will show that path to you also. This is the role of a Guru. This is the role of a Guru. We have to hold his hand. So, whatever he tells, then we must listen to it with full faith that he is the one who can take us across. But there comes the thing, but you have all, all promised that you want to become pure, right? So, Purity, first thing is that be pure and then whatever you hear, have great faith in that and slowly, slowly, slowly go forward, constantly analyzing oneself, seeing oneself and comparing with what one has to have, has to achieve. Are you falling from that? Are you giving enough effort? Is your bhakti towards the world more or is your bhakti and commitment to this also is there or not? whether the commitment is growing by day by day. And the whole thing should not be a struggle. It should be very, very easy, very enjoyable, part of life. Say, uh, uh, a couple gets a child, right? They do not have any experience of bringing up a child. There may be a lot of difficulties in bringing up the child. Initially, the child will cry, or the child will keep waking up at night. They were not used to wake up at, wake up, waking up at night. Throughout the, some children will only wake up at night. So their parents, they have to get used to it. Then so many other things, getting, getting the child um, admitted to a good school, then whether the child is studying or not. Some children are very unhealthy, constantly taking them to the doctor. So the, the couple was not used to it. But are they living it? Saying that it's very chamela hai. Ab mere bacche ko bhagao. Ye to nahi karte hai na? They still go forward. And ultimately then one day and then they enjoy also. They enjoy having the child and looking after the child and get, getting a lot of joy from the child. So that joy I am talking about. Ihaan pe kyo aisa? In any spiritual practice, after some time you ask, even our devotees, initiated devotees, they will ask, do you sit and do meditation? No, I just chant. I do work and chant. So I will ask them, did Swamiji give you uh, mantra when you were walking about? Or did he give you mantra when you were sitting? Uh, yes. So this is a what? That means what? You are not getting the joy out of it. The joy has to be. You, as soon as some difficulty is there, as soon as maybe you have sat for meditation and your 
यू हैड सो सो मैनी क्रिस क्रॉस थॉट आज उठ जाते हैं कल करेंगे वो कल तो नहीं आएगा कभी सो दैट जॉय एज यू फाइंड जॉय इन योर वर्ली लाइफ अलॉन्ग विथ योर सफरिंग्स यू मस्ट हैव जॉय इन दिस एंड मोर जॉय इन दिस एंड मोर जॉय इन दिस ये तो करना चाहिए सो वॉट इज द स्टेट ऑफ विशुद्ध सत्व शंकराचार्य डिस्क्राइब्स द विशुद्ध सत्व स्टेट सो आई केम टू विवेक चूडामणि अगेन बिकॉज आई वॉन्टेड टू से दैट विवेक चूडामणि इज अ कंपोजिशन ऑफ शंकराचार्य एंड द बुक इज लाइक दिस ही स्टार्ट टेलिंग द शिष्य एंड अल्टीमेटली टेक्स इन टू सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन एंड देन द बुक एंड्स सो ही से इज द सीकर एक्सपीरियंस इज प्रसाद गुना प्रसाद वॉट इज प्रसाद प्लेसिडिटी और प्लेजेंटनेस ऑफ द माइंड नाउ द प्लेजेंटनेस ऑफ द माइंड एंड प्लेसिडिटी ऑफ माइंड वी आर ऑल्सो इन एनकाउंटर एट मेनी अदर टाइम्स है ना समटाइम्स वी फील वेरी वेरी प्लेसिड वेरी क्या वेरी काम दिस प्लेसिडिटी इज नॉट विच वन इज फेमिलियर विथ लाइक वॉट वन एक्सपीरियंसिस when any expectation is fulfilled or periods of time when one does not encounter any major problem in life i do you understand we become very placid and very calm and very nice when there is no major problem in life or some some things we have expected and we we are fulfilled it is not that placidity what is this placidity this placidity this placidity graces the mind effortlessly without any cause or interaction with any outside object or situation it is spontaneous in nature and is eternal all other placidity is when you when your expectations are fulfilled or your life is having not much you know ups and downs you are very placid but then your placidity is dependent on the situation situation as soon as the some difficulties come your placidity will be lost that means the placidity that generally we have that is the prasada or prashantata that we have that is dependent on objects but here the prasada word is something which is effortless without any cause without any interaction with objects it is spontaneous in nature and is eternal also in the vishuddha sattva state one experiences the self swatma anubhuti guna prasad guna prasada ayo time is over <laughs> so tomorrow i will do its time is over now okay so i have done only prasada tomorrow i will do other things but again uh, since we have to uh, now go to the next uh, program pushpa samarpanam you know that is what these things cannot be discussed in short times i can tell you this uh, i was telling you that at one time i also used to go for swamiji satsangs and when i joined the ashram every time is a satsang actually there was uh, we were very busy even now we are always busy but sometimes when we are going to retire to our beds at that time there were very very few people in the ashram so swami ji will suddenly start talking on something and he will talk 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 sometimes it will become 1 o'clock so at that time i understood that this cannot be talked in a short time and Uh, in a very um, in a structured way it has to come naturally naturally you have to you have to give your time you cannot feel now suppose i keep on talking to you till evening after some time you will be doing like this looking at your watch because you have got other work to do nobody will sit here so this is what is but even that much is okay that you give your time that you are eager that gives lot of encouragement to talk also when 
You know, the best comes out of a speaker when the uh, listeners are very eager, committed, dedicated. So I think I've got a good, good audience. Sampurnam Jagadeva Nandanavanam Sarve Pikalpadruma Gangam Vari Samasta Vari Nivaha Punya Samasta Kriya Vacha Prakrita Samskrita Shruti Shiro Vadanasi Medini Sarvam Vastiti Rasya Vastu Vishaya Drishti Parabrahmani Sarva Vastiti Rasya Vastu Vishaya Drishti Parabrahmani Jai Guru Jai Guru